Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Dad Richard Fishing. Today I'm going to be doing a new series. I took a vote uh, on the community tab. So if you go to my channel, you can click on community and on there I post polls and photos and things I'm working on. I took a poll. I asked if you guys would be interested in seeing some of the knots and, you know, different leaders that I tie, stuff like that. Uh, if you'd be interested on tutorials on that. And I got a 100 response. Yes. So today I'm going to be doing the first one. Today I'm going to show you guys how I build fluorocarbon leaders out of heavier fluorocarbon, um, but appropriate for like pike, also musky, not crazy, crazy heavy duty leaders, but heavy duty enough to survive a pike biting and with as little hardware as possible. So that means no crimps. So when you've got a big beast lure like this, or like this bad boy, you're not too worried about what kind of leader you've got on there. It doesn't matter if it's got crimps and little springs on it or whatever. You can get those heavy duty 120 pound fluorocarbon leaders and you don't have to worry about it. But if you go after the post-spawn or pre-spawn pike bite and you're using small little guys like this or you love to use chatterbaits like this, then you don't want giant leaders on there. You want small, discreet, but very strong leaders like this. This is actually tied with 50 pound fluoro. And as you can see here, it's got no crimp whatsoever. It's just direct to a snap. And then here you've got a little barrel swivel. So this is absolutely perfect when you're using smaller lures and you wanna go after some pike, but you don't want a gigantic leader. So stick around, I'm gonna show you guys. We're gonna use a special knot called a Centauri knot. So let's get into it. We're gonna bring the camera down onto my desk and I'm gonna show you do it from my perspective, how it looks like if you were tying it, uh, if you were me. We're only gonna need three things. We're gonna need a pack of snaps, some barrel swivels like this, and your favorite brand of fluorocarbon. So I've got 50 pound uh, fluorocarbon here from Suffix, but of course you're, you can use Seaguar. I like Seaguar or Brazex. Um, different kinds of leader material or blue label, uh, whatever you prefer. This is good for 50, right up to 120, 150 pound test or, or higher actually. So, uh, but for pike fishing, for smaller lures, I wouldn't go bigger than 80. Uh, 50 or 60 is generally what I would recommend. Now you might be asking yourself why a Centauri knot? What and what the heck is that? Why not this knot or that knot? Um, a couple of reasons. One, when the fluorocarbon gets really big, it starts becoming a bit of a pain to tie onto these terminal tackle pieces. It just doesn't grab properly. The knot doesn't look good. It falls apart. You can also use a uni knot, but the problem is, is with a uni knot, as the, in my experience anyway, my opinion, as the fluorocarbon gets bigger, the more tendency a uni can slip, whereas the Centauri knot will never slip ever, ever, ever. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna take the camera down. I'm gonna put it on the desk so you guys can see it sort of from my point of view, how I tie the knot. Uh, we'll go through it nice and slow, pause the video if I'm going too quick or if you need to practice or whatever, and uh, we should be good. And as always, guys, if you find this helpful, don't forget, smash, smash the like button. Show me that you appreciate these videos. Leave a comment below, let me know how it goes or if you've got a different technique, whatever. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that way you know whenever I release one of these videos. Let's go. Okay guys, so just before we get going, I'm just gonna give you another look at the knot close up. So you can see it's actually got three loops with the tag end coming out. So this is what we're aiming for. And I really prefer these kind of clips uh, when it comes to clasps. These are the clasp styles that I like. Uh, I just find they don't come undone, they're very strong. Uh, if I happen to catch a really big fish and this gets all bent, it'll still stay clipped on, whereas some of the other styles I've actually seen break apart. And they're also quite light and sturdy. And then of course we've got the barrel swivel right here. Pretty basic stuff. So I basically just bought these off of Amazon. So you've got your barrel swivels and my clips are in here. It comes in a kit with all kinds of different sizes. I'll put a link to this in the description below so you can check it out. So let's go ahead and grab one of these clips out of here. Let's go ahead and get our fluoro out. In terms of how much you wanna use, um, you want about, 12 to 14 inches for your leader. And then you're gonna need about six to eight inches of tag uh, to work with on each side. So you do need quite a bit of tag end to work on this. So I'll take a pretty good piece, probably somewhere around two and a half feet long. And I'll just go ahead and cut that off. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the barrel. So let's get the barrel on here. Okay, so there's our barrel. And I like to have the tag on the bottom, okay? So we're gonna pull through about eight inches of tag, just like so, okay? So we've got the tag out. And then we're gonna just pinch off an amount that we have here, okay? So you can see I've got the barrel just hanging here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch it like so, okay? So I've pinched it off, I've got 
main line at the top. Sorry about that, there we go. We got main line at the top and we've got our tag on the bottom. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna wrap it like so around my finger, okay? And I'm gonna pinch it with my thumb. So you want this to be going over the main line, okay? So you don't want it under, you want it over. So you can see I've actually got it going over underneath my thumb. So that's where I've got it pinched, okay? So you're gonna just go ahead and turn it once and then loop it under, and then I'm gonna hold it with my thumb and my index finger, so you can see I've got it pinched. So that's one loop. I'm gonna go and do a second loop. There we go, there's two. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do one more. So you can see I've got, let me see if I can get the camera to zoom in. There we go. So you can see I've got two loops. Now I'm gonna do a third, and that's it. Bring it back and pinch it off like that. So now I've got one, two, three loops, and my tag up like this. Then you're gonna take these loops and you're gonna grab them right here and you're just gonna drag it over your nail until they pop out like so. So now you can see I've got the three loops here. They're sticking out, okay? And you can see my main line is right here and here's my tag and I've got a hole right here. So I'm gonna pass this in behind and through the top part of the hole, you see? See where I've got it passing through right there? I'm gonna go ahead and grab that and pull it through like so. So now you can see I've got main line here, tag here, and I've got this loop that's here. So now what we're gonna do is we need to separate these and create a bow tie. So you do have to play around with these. So we're gonna go ahead and separate them. So sometimes you do gotta play around with it. There we go, come on now. There we go, there we go, okay. So what I do is I just pull this through. So you pull this loop and it tightens up that center loop and it creates a bow tie like this. And you do need to practice it. Sometimes you'll make a mess and you'll need to redo it, uh, especially when you're first learning. But now you can see it's created. Let me get the zoom on here. So you can see what the bow tie looks like. So we pulled the center loop tight and it collapses it in the center and that's what creates this bow tie. And you'll know you've tied it properly because when you pull it tight, you'll see the three loops in the knot, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna moisten the knot, okay? So this reduces friction and helps you pull it nice and tight, doesn't damage the line. So we're gonna moisten the knot. So basically you're gonna spit all over it. Let me bring it over here. Okay, kind of gross. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the tag end. We're gonna pull the tag end and this side. And it's just gonna start tightening it. You can see how it's starting to tighten down. Then we're gonna take the tag end. I'm gonna put it in my mouth and use it to pull it tight, okay? So let me turn the camera around. You can see what that's all about. So you can see we're forming the knot. So now I'm gonna go ahead and bite it down. And pull it tight. Now you can see that knot is tight. All right, let's go back to the desk. Okay, so with the knot nice and tight, you then go ahead and pull on the main line and you'll see it'll actually go ahead and tighten up the knot all the way to the end. And there you go. So now we've tightened it all the way down. Go ahead and grab it. You can give it a good, good couple of tugs like that. And there you go, she's done. And if we zoom in real close, let's see if we can get it in super close, you can see that the knot has three loops in it. So those are the three loops that you put over your finger. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut off our tag end. You can go ahead and put that pretty close. And there you go. So our barrel swivel's on. Now we're gonna do the exact same knot and we're gonna attach the clip onto here. I'm gonna turn the camera around so now you can see the whole process when I'm tying it. So once again, we're gonna put the clip through. We're gonna give ourselves about eight inches of tag end, six to eight inches. So we've got our loop right here like this. We're gonna go ahead and pinch it over here. And again, I've got tag, got the tag end on the bottom. I've got the main line on the top. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this and I'm gonna loop it over my finger like so. That's one, now we're gonna do two. There's two. And then we're gonna do one more for three loops. And there's your third loop. 
with the tag end sticking up, okay? Once again, we're gonna grab this and move it off my finger so that I've got my loop like this. So you can see how that looks. Then we take our tag and I'm gonna pop it through the top hole right up here in between the loops and the main line. And we cut it close with the amount of extra I gave myself. So there you go, you can see what that looks like now. All right, and now again, we're gonna separate the loops and create the bow tie. Like I said, sometimes you gotta play with it to get, the, to get your bow tie settled in properly. So we just gotta separate them now. Sometimes you gotta pull this a little tighter. And there we go. So now you can see it's kind of like a bow tie. All right, we're gonna go ahead and moisten the knot. Okay, knot is ready to be pulled tight. So now again, pull on the tag end. And I'm gonna pull on the top and start to tighten up that knot. So, then I'm gonna bite down. So I'm gonna bite on the tag and pull on this. There we go, you can see the knot is now tight. And then we're just gonna go ahead and tighten her up like this. So you're gonna pull your main line until it's nice and tight. There you go. And then just grab that, pull on the main line, and get it nice and tight. There you go, perfect. And you can see once again, we've got our three loops in the knot. There you go, so now we'll just cut off the tag. And you now have the lightest possible heavy duty rig for smaller baits to keep that natural action. All right, let's snap this on here. And there you go, all set guys. So you have a great no crimp fluorocarbon leader ready to take on big toothy critters like pike and gigantic walleye. And even if you happen to get a muskie, this will survive it, no problem. And uh, yeah, this is actually one of my favorites for pre-spawn pike. If it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. <laughs> In terms of leader length, that's often a question that I'll get is how long should the leader be? Um, for casting, you want to use a shorter leader. So 12 inches, 14 inches for casting is great. Uh, when it comes to trolling, you might want to get a longer leader for trolling. So that's where I'll go like a two foot leader, okay? So it's not that hard. It doesn't have to be exact. You know, it's more for casting. It's just more for optimizing, you know, how far this is sticking out from your rod when you go to cast. You don't want to be casting with like a three foot leader. Otherwise it gets a little annoying, right? If you guys have some other questions or you want to know some more tips and maybe even my secret bait that I use for uh, pike fishing, you should probably go and check out my other videos. I've got a video, I'll put a link to the description below, and it's uh, my pre-spawn pike fishing, although I think the last video I did was not that great, the bite wasn't good, but this year, very soon, at the beginning of May, pike season opens, and it's gonna be sick and ridiculous. I've got some awesome lures coming up, so I'm looking very, very forward to that, guys. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this tip. I'll do some more knot tying tips if you guys like this video, uh, so let me know in the comments below, and of course, don't forget to like and all that good stuff. And I hope by now you guys are all subscribed as you should be because I just love you guys so much. And I will see you guys on the next video, all right? Thank you so much. Have a good one. Tight lines, all that good stuff, and peace.